Hello guys and gals, me Mudaharn, welcome to the uh, second apocalypse kicking in, ladies and gentlemen. If you can tell that I got a kind of a smile on my face for something that should be pretty somber for anybody on the website, I'm going to explain to you why, and why, in a way, I kind of support this new second apocalypse that's unfortunately hitting the waves over here. Now, let me put things into context for you. Over the past week, I've actually done some of these Elsa Gate videos, and I've covered the topic, and I looked into it myself. And ever since then, mainstream media attention's hit it, and YouTube has had to backpedal and fix up a lot of this. They've had to remove tons of channels. I congratulated on them doing this, but and so we realized the true nature of what YouTube was all about once this actually hit and once you saw some of the dust settle. The reality is, this kind of stuff has been going on forever. This, 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 this topic isn't exactly something that I would consider even remotely to be new. The Elsa Gate videos have been running for some of the longest time ever, and the thing is, you might wonder, do these fly under the radar? Maybe to a lot of people, but there's been plenty of channels that have covered the idea of Elsa Gate videos. For example, the earliest that I could ever find was Zaxi Games, a channel that was uh, creating an entire, I guess you could say, series on making cases against this kind of stuff, and not just talking about the videos, but even the games. For me, I covered uh, the games aspect of this entirely. I looked into the game side of it first, and then I looked into the videos of it. Channels like Pyrocynical have been talking about the stuff since the beginning of days, so it's not like any of this flew under the radar by anyone's... Uh, chance. But what this was, was ultimately the biggest thing on YouTube ever. You know, you might look at things like drama or vlogging or, you know, prank videos or things like that ever being huge. The thing is, those as those videos have never been even a chunk as strong as some of these Elsa Frozen Gate videos. Because the reasoning behind this comes out from this. The actual channels out of this were far and many, and all of them were very, very healthy. They were getting views rivaling some of the top YouTubers ever. This was the biggest phenomenon ever. And when I mentioned in my first video that YouTube actually created an application to foster this kind of stuff was true. YouTube Kids exists as a platform to push these Elsa Gate videos. Not anymore, but in its inception, YouTube's, YouTube's kid application was definitely pushing this beyond belief. And what did YouTube do about it? Nothing. Considering the fact that YouTube kids should be pretty curated by an actual staff member at YouTube, it definitely shows that there was some intent by the company to allow this. Now the thing about mainstream media attention is that's what YouTube listens to. No matter what anybody on the site says, even if you have the most subscribers on the site or the least or whatever, or the most views, you don't get listened to at all. That's the beauty of YouTube. You don't really have a voice when you think you should. But any mainstream journalist website definitely does. When the first apocalypse hit, I was definitely against it. The first apocalypse was here for a lot of reasons, but it was sparked by the uh, PewDiePie Jews incident. And it kind of got a little bit more heated with the N-word argument entirely. Now over there, do I consider those jokes to be stupid on his part? Yes, I did. But... I am always against that first adpoculus because it was definitely blown out of proportion. Things weren't looked at contextually, he was painted as some kind of a racist, and when it came to the websites in charge, they definitely, definitely flamed out everything beyond belief to the point where they contacted advertisers and they made it seem like this site was run by a bunch of Ku Klux Klan members or somebody of equal racist uh, endeavors. But this second apocalypse, I do back. Was there some sensationalism that was going on in the media about this? Definitely. If you look into it, there were sites that definitely focused on the idea that YouTube allowed X-rated child pornography to an extent, which is completely bullshit. There was definitely no child porn that was uploaded to this website. Maybe things representative of it, but nothing that would be, you know, clear-cut child pornography. But what it does kind of show is that YouTube was only willing to listen and get rid of these videos when everybody in the mainstream side definitely took a, definitely took pot shots at it. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to the mainstream side of the media, that's essentially what a lot of the bigger upper heads of these websites listen to. And that's what a lot of people tend to focus on. It's just one of those things that's pushed up in everyone's faces all the time. But again, it does show a clear lack of oversight by the people over at YouTube as well. The reason why I support it is that it shows that this Elsa Gate trend, which definitely did d damage children by showing them shit that they shouldn't really have seen and definitely fucked with their heads, was pushed upon by YouTube. And why was it pushed upon by them? To make 
ad revenue. That's essentially what it comes down to. As many people would like to, you know, put an entire conspiracy like this was designed to destroy children's heads, that might have happened as a side effect, but at the end of the day, it comes down to making money. And YouTube certainly profited off these videos entirely. The content creators that were producing these fucked up videos profited off of it, and at the end, it caused a second apocalypse, which hurts the core set of content creators on the site even more than it does. But it's something that I think should be supported for the reason alone that YouTube never got off their ass until they were caught with their pants down. And even though they're getting rid of tons of these websites, I don't want anybody to think that I'm against the idea of them doing it. If YouTube is policing the site to get rid of these videos, I think that's a good thing. And YouTube, you know, good on you. But also at the same time, bitch slap to your face because you only did it when you got fucking caught. And same thing to Disney and Marvel. You should have gotten on your ass and stopped this kind of shit too. I in a way think that you even fucking harbored this kind of shit allowed on your website. You had copyright control over your fucking characters. The fact that you allowed this shit drives me fucking insane. I don't know how the fuck that happened. You can target people for doing the stupidest shit to the Star Wars franchise, but when it comes to shit that's actually killing you in the eyes of the public, no, no, that's fucking fine. That's all, that's all fine and dandy. But YouTube, I think, got the worst of it all, and it deserves the worst of it all, because it knowingly harbored this kind of a platform, and in the first time, they created an entire application to fucking harbor this platform and push it even further. It's fucked up to call it out on it. It might sound like I'm bringing upon some conspiracy theory, you know, type shit, you know, tinfoil hat stuff, but it's not a conspiracy, motherfucker, if it's what actually happened. They harbored this stuff, and they let it go on forever. And the reason I support this kind of an apocalypse is because, yes, it pulls money out of this website. But like I said earlier, YouTube doesn't fucking listen to anything that any content creator says. You can write to anybody at YouTube's headquarters and they, they'll gladly not give a fuck. You want me to tell you who YouTube doesn't do that to? You want me to tell you who YouTube licks the nuts of? The gooch? The taint? The fucking, you know, pussy cream out of? Is fucking Google themselves. A lot of people have criticized Google for fucking up YouTube, but take a little step back. Realize that Google was really the site that infused this place with money. It was the platform that gave YouTube what it really is now, you know, the, the giant web sharing service that it is, and it helped fight its legal battles that it was co going through a, a lot. But the thing about Google is Google does a million things all at once. They're a big tech company. YouTube is nothing but a bragging right to these people. And the thing is, when your bragging right gets shit on and you realize that there's tons of companies like Netflix, Amazon, and Apple that could fuck over YouTube and become the biggest platform almost overnight, that scares the shit out of Google executives. That scares the shit out of Alphabet executives, the owners of Google. So if an adpocalypse or a third adpocalypse or a fucking fourth one is what it takes for Google CEOs to drive down to YouTube's headquarters in California and eventually put their foot down, take their pants off and tell them to either suck it hardcore or get the fuck out of the offices, fire the fucking division and re hire new people that actually know what the fuck they're doing, maybe it's what we fucking need. Maybe it's what needs to happen. You know, because at the end of the site, I've gotten sick and tired of watching my favorite content creators make videos about how they're getting demonetized and how they're forced to go to Patreon or every other revenue source imaginable because YouTube's inept attitude has fucked over the entire site and what really keeps it thriving. Because you all can say that content creators, you know, maybe they need to get a job or things out of it. At the end of the day, this is a symbiotic relationship between those creators and YouTube. The reason YouTube gets the viewership that it does is because of those content creators. The reason those content creators do what they do is because of the infrastructure YouTube has created. Without one or the other, they fucking fail and at the end of the day if it's if it causes everyone to bleed like like the favorite gnome of the internet keemstars once said in order to fucking fix something up you gotta fucking burn it down he mentioned that about the commentary community and you know what keem you're fucking right about it with youtube and you can apply those same words as what i'm saying you gotta burn this shit down rebuild it up because let me tell you susan Wojcicki, whatever the fuck her name is, all right, she needs to face some serious firing, all right? I'm pretty sure if a third apocalypse comes or this one as bad as it is right now because you have kids involved, I bet it pisses fucking Google off and they're looking at a way to get this get this woman out of her fucking, you know, cushy seat without a goddamn severance package. At this point, she needs to be replaced because if she's going to start tweeting about turkeys during Thanksgiving versus fixing up her fucking broken website at this point then she needs to be replaced. She doesn't own YouTube. She's simply hired by Google to manage it. 
All Google has to do is find a better fucking manager, and there exist better managers. Hell, some content creators on the site, I'm pretty damn sure have the knowledge to get the site running up, or at least manage it better than she could, and a lot of other YouTube executives. At the end of the day, we know that YouTube is Google's bitch, and Google... You better go up to your bottom bitch, pimp slap her a couple times, and, and make, make sure she does right by you. I know that might have been a very uh, un-PC way of putting it, but frankly, given the context, things need to be rearranged. And that being said, I'm going to get some gaming videos edited up, and I just want to hear what you all have to say. And frankly, if you're a content creator that's really big on this site too, and you watch this video, let me know what the fuck you're thinking in the comment section below, because... I know for some people this is their livelihood, but I want to know how this demonetization really fucking affects you because even the whole demonetization isn't even like fucking clear cut for every channel. Some channels got it worse than others and it's a whole bunch of background data that we still don't even see. With that said, this is me, Mudahar. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I'm going to play those new operators on Siege. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.